people, I'm Ginny Metherill, I'm a fourth generation witch. We're going to do a really quick one today, only because I'm incredibly busy preparing for the witchcraft retreat that is happening at the end of November in the UK. Details coming soon, but put the date in your diary, last weekend of November, come over, join me. We have witchy feasts, witch covens, witchcrafts, it's going to be magical. So today I just wanted to give you a little update onto what's been happening with the ash tree saga that's been going on in my house. Now for those of you who haven't watched my previous video, I'll let you know that my wonderful teenage children and their friends took an axe to a beautiful hundred year old ash tree and chopped a load of its bark off. Now we've had the ash tree looked at and it's going to green up definitely next year but the year after is the year of worry because if it hasn't healed the wound that the boys made then infection could get in and rot and the tree will then you know fail. So in order to try and help the tree survive I placed a spell on it. Now this spell was a very specific one it was quite difficult it took me a while to a come up with and b implement. There was an old ash tree on the top of the hill just above my house, just over there. And this ash tree held a dryad spirit. Now the ash tree fell over and I was devastated because I'd spent a lot of time with this particular drive and I was sad at their demise. However, the energy of dryads is not reincarnated like our energy. It is just simply fed back into the world and into the earth. And so around this part of the world, there is therefore a lot of the remnants of dryad energy. I pulled some of that energy together and sort of packaged it into the ash tree to see what would happen and whether this ash tree could survive with this help. Now, this is the update to that spell. I did the spell a week ago or so and think, haven't really thought about it since. I've been getting on with witchcraft, with my family, with the kids, with everything that happens in July, which is the busiest month of the year for children, it seems. So I haven't thought about it. I didn't consider it in any way. And until this morning when I woke up and as I woke up, I just knew that the ash tree had taken on a feminine spirit to it which it's I, I, I'm not sure yet of the actual details I'm not sure if the tree spirit is you know a, full, a fully formed dryad spirit but it's a feminine one which interests me because the ash tree that was on the top of the hill which I took the remnants of the energy from was a male orientated spirit now, in the world of tree spirits, um, I think, but I'm not 100% sure because I just haven't met them, but I think that there is male spirits, female spirits, and there's possibly like a neutral hermaphrodite spirit because, I mean, I think it must depend on the way that the trees themselves reproduce. You know you get those trees that reproduce by their root systems, and I think, therefore, those are considered sort of neither male nor female if they've got a spirit attached to them which not all trees do. I mean, they're quite rare. I've only ever met, oh gosh, three or four spirits in my lifetime. So it's very exciting that the ash tree, I think, has this female tree spirit within it. I don't know if it's a full-on dryad. I don't know if it's tree spirit. I am now going to look into that. But it's, you know, it's very new. I'm, and I'm absolutely thrilled that because... I spent so much time with the dryad of the ash tree on the top of the hill who died and when he died I was able to pull his remnant of energy and put it into an environment where a new tree spirit was birthed. So I'm thrilled. I can truthfully say that the ash tree will survive utterly a hundred percent and I, in two years time I shall show you a picture of the ash tree looking magnificent. But I also wanted very quickly to talk about the traditions associated with ash trees because they are vast and there's so many of them. Traditionally they were used for spears. So the ancient Greeks are very keen on the ash tree making the arrows for Cupid's bow or Eros as they had him and um, Poseidon had his trident shaft made out of an ash tree. The Celtic Irish believed that if you possessed an ash wand, you couldn't drown. So, witches' brooms are made of ash handles. 
because you know they have ash tree spirits in them and ash trees are one of the main trees that are thought to hold tree spirits or dryads they were worshipped in the old days you know we were quite a tree worshipping society so the druids held them in high esteem the vikings held them in high esteem the celts the anglo-saxons i mean all of us when you're trying to avert bad luck you might have heard the phrase touch wood it should be a piece of ash wood that you must touch each of the ash leaflets is on a, um, a pinnate form, it's called, and they have, tend to have an odd number of leaves. But if you find an ash tree with an even number of leaves, this is akin to finding a four-leaf clover. And do ask the ash tree for a couple of branches and twigs to make your wands from. I do have wands that I have made from the old ash tree that was on the hill that held the dryad. And I have to say, they're pretty darn powerful and so I mean, recommend it. And finally for the ash tree, this is very traditional that your maple should be made of ash wood. Don't forget to go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall. There'll be plenty on there about the upcoming witchcraft retreat at the end of November, so have a look there in due course. Places for it are limited, so book early to avoid disappointment as they say. And otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe because that is what enables me to keep on doing these videos for you. And I will see you next week.